So Doug, welcome to the Highlands. You've been here for a couple of days now and I know it's been a long time coming and we've known each other for, I don't know, five or six years. And uh, I'm curious how you, uh, what you think your impressions are, first impressions of, of the Highlands of Scotland and uh, compared to obviously where you're from. What are you? Well, the first thing is a lot of what you're saying makes more sense. You know, we've been talking a long time and I've been trying to understand your vision and seeing this and seeing what you talk about puts things together better for me. Scotland's been changed for a lot longer than Yellowstone was changed. So we just had to put wolves back and other things happen and we have this ecosystem that's recovering. Your story here is very similar, but it's a lot further away than it used to be. But your vision makes sense now. I can understand more about what you've been talking about. Yeah, good, good. So, um, and how do you feel about, um, you know, you, you, you drove up with me from MS and, uh, you know, we, we, a lot of people talk about reintroducing wolves and, and, and lynx and things. Um, you know, I've never been one involved with a reintroduction as such. I'm, I'm someone that would like to create a, like a South African style reserve. And uh, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's possible. I, I don't know, just visiting for a few days, but your, your idea uh, has a lot of elements to it that should work. I mean, a fence, it's large enough, there's plenty of food. What wolves need is protection from people, you've got that, and something to eat, prey, and you've got that. So I don't see why it shouldn't work, but how it works socially is maybe a bigger issue for you. Yeah, I mean, we've, over the years, um, I think people have taken the vision out of context and thought about, we were just going to release wolves into the wild, and that's something that, uh, for me, is, is, is not a situation, a viable proposition. Uh, we've got so much livestock in the Scottish Highlands and fences and barriers and so on, that I think uh, that will be a, a difficult challenge. And we live in a country with 65 million people, although they're not all in Scotland. Um, you know, a densely populated country, and, uh, and that's why I think this sort of South African style reserve is possibly the way forward. Yeah, well it's certainly uh, seeing Scotland now and seeing how much it's been altered by people. I didn't really realize that until coming here. I knew that that was the case, but it really is a human dominated landscape. And it appears to me what you want to do is kind of chisel out this small area and try and uh, you know make it a nature preserve, bring back the animals that used to be here see if you get ecosystem restoration, see if it fits in, uh, see if it works for the people. I mean, it's quite uh, an ambitious idea, but I think, you know, you could get a yeah. toehold and it would work. I kind of think about the three E's. And, you know, I think about the environment being enhanced, so more uh, tree regeneration because deer are being moved around all the time, constantly. I think about the economic benefits um, uh, to the community and the surrounding area. I think about the employment benefits and in fact, there's four E's, because there's education that comes on top, sure. which is a huge part of the whole process. Can you imagine, you know, bringing a pack of wolves back here and studying them and watching them and see how they interact with the, with the deer and, and, and themselves, how they move around and how they possibly reproduce and make two packs. It's kind of going to be a very, very interesting educational sort of uh, um, experience. What do you think about uh, how we should be going forward with that education? How should we, how we should be monitoring that? I mean. Well, people do get inspiration from wolves. Uh, I mean, wolves in a lot of ways in North America, but Europe too, are kind of, uh, you know, touchstones of wildness. They're mysterious, they're hard to control. And so people are inspired by that. They like it, um, passionate about it. I mean, the number of people who come to Yellowstone just to see wolves, to be near them, to experience them, you know, their presence is symbolical of making nature whole again. And, you know, even though you're going to do this in a controlled setting, I think you'll get that same feeling here. I mean, it's hard to overstate the kind of magicalness of wolves. They, they have this allure that is endless for people. And, and bringing that back, even on a small scale, I think will resonate with a public past Scotland and Great Britain even, and to maybe Europe. Yeah. It's quite a vision. I mean, um, you've, uh, you've now had wolves back in Yellowstone for 20 years and you've made a publication recently, you've come out of the publication, which is really measuring the wolf effect. Now, we all have heard about the, uh, the, the aspen trees on the riparian zones, how they've grown uh, and regenerated and the vegetation is coming back and so on. Tell me a little bit more about, about the tourism aspect side of it and, 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 and how, how the surrounding area has been affected and, and the numbers of people yeah. visiting Yellowstone. 
Well, I mean, very quickly, Yellowstone's become the best place in the world to view free-ranging wolves. I mean, that is a worldwide reputation that we did not promote ourselves, the National Park Service. It's one that came about just by word of mouth, people coming there and seeing wolves. And so that has grown into a small industry. In fact, we did a study in the late 2000s that went and documented it, and it's $35 million a year of economic activity to the communities that surround Yellowstone for people coming in there to see wolves. And the other thing that's very important about it is Yellowstone has a peak season, and that's June through August. And a lot of these people are coming to see wolves in what we call the shoulder seasons, the times of years where there's not a lot of people coming to Yellowstone, and even during the winter. So that's providing economic activity at times of the year when businesses need it the most. And that's been a significant byproduct of bringing wolves back. And in fact, if I was to do it again, I might argue that uh, visitor enjoyment or people seeing wolves, feeling wolves, is just as important for reintroducing them for ecological reasons. It's been that significant. Yeah, I think that uh, I think that there's an opportunity here in the Scottish Highlands. I mean, we're talking about it you know, an area of the, of the highlands which is really not very productive. I mean, it's low in land values. Um, there's not a lot of uh, industry going on here in the way of sheep farming or in the upland areas. And uh, for me, I'm, I, I, I'm kind of proposing it would be like a new economy. You know, uh, my, my, my great mentor, you know, Doug Tompkins, who uh, uh, died last year, you know, he always talks about a new economy, a new way forward, you know, wildlife related business so that people can benefit from nature. So instead of just trying to go around the place and, and dominate nature, we actually give nature a chance. And then we, we, all, we all benefit. We benefit from the, the improved carbon sequestration with all the forest that's growing. And we improve because of our livelihoods. And maybe communities like Ardguy and Bonner Bridge, our local villages here, that people, you know, the families will, will stay together. And instead of people, young kids going off into the cities and getting jobs there, you know, it, it brings the families together. And that's kind of exciting too. For me, I find that human dimension that will benefit as a result of bringing wolves back and bringing more tourists into the area is very positive. Well, and you also have something going for you. You know, I'm from a faraway place and I'm very familiar with the Scottish Highlands. And that's where we're standing right now. And you bring wolves back and that idea could carry farther than you think. That's a very, you know, alluring combination. Scottish Highlands back with wolves who are here. What was it? 400 years ago, 350 yeah, anyway. Yeah. And reuniting those two things, that could be a quite attractive uh, sell for people to come to this area. And yeah, as you say, local folks, community folks benefiting from it. It's it's quite an idea. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of uh, rewilding groups and and other NGOs that talk about bringing back the forest. And, and then possibly bringing back carnivores. But for me, um, you know, that's going to be a long, long, long time away. I think you and I both know and understand that wolves don't depend on forests, they depend on meat. Yes. You know, they're, they're, yes. They're, they depend on deer and prey and elk and so And they'll so live on. anywhere that they get the meat, really. Yeah, I mean, yeah. you know, wolves live in the open tundra of northern Scandinavia, northern Canada. And so for me, the, the wolves will, in a way, will encourage um, tree regeneration because they'll be doing what they did in Yellowstone and moving the deer around yeah. and so you know in the and riparian just, zones exactly where we are right now in fact right here by the river Allerdale you know this should be a forest when we planted something like 250,000 trees in this area alone and um, you know th that that tree growth will be enhanced when there's predators in and moving the the, the, the the unglets around and and then we can give shade and security and to the riverbanks and 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 help uh, the habitat for the salmon and that would be kind of key and a lot of our neighbors downstream will be very happy with that well, similar things have happened in Yellowstone. Not exactly the same story, but the elements of it are the same. And that's quite a remarkable vision, you know? So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens. Yeah, okay, well, thanks, Doug. You bet. And thanks for uh, coming over to see us. Great being be, be, here. Be a pleasure. Great being here.